the institutional system of global financial markets and the corporations that serve these markets are designed and dedicated to growing consumption to increase the financial assets of the already wealthy. To put it bluntly, they're designed to convert real capital into financial capital, which is fictitious, is simply an accounting chit. Increase financial capital to increase the relative power of the already wealthy. Now let me suggest this critical point, that the only legitimate reason for a government to issue a corporate charter extending special privileges to a group of private investors is to serve a public purpose. There is simply no ethical or democratic rationale for the existence of a pure private benefit corporation. So what will be critical elements of the new system's design? There's amazing organizational design talent in this room, and that's one of the things that so excites me about this gathering. We must set for ourselves a design task that goes way beyond redesigning the corporation. We need a design for a new global economy grounded in different values and institutional forms that unleash the full creative potential of the human species and direct it to addressing the needs outlined above. So where do we look for leadership for change? This is a very difficult question that's already been raised. It seems to me very unlikely that a system designed to increase consumption and inequality is going to transform itself from within to a system devoted to reducing consumption and reallocating resources equitably to responsible beneficial uses. Among other things, this would require wealthy people voluntarily and universally to accept negative financial returns on their investment. I suggest that the initiative to reclaim government, to change the rules and bring forth a new economy that places life values ahead of financial values increasingly depends on voluntary citizen action from outside the corporate system. That sometime in the early 1980s, capital ceased to be scarce. Capital, the capital market moved from a seller's market to a buyer's market. Since the, the last 20 years, capital is a commodity, just like iron ore. And that is the world in which our corporations have to live. And their statute is one in which the law gives the capital supplier the absolute powers of hiring, firing, and self-remuneration. Because that was the obvious thing to do in the 19th century. But that is still the case in the corporate law, in the company law here in the US, as far as I know. It is still the case in the company law in the United Kingdom where I live, and it is definitely still the, co the case in the company laws in continental Europe. But the consequences of capital and therefore of savings and therefore capital to be just a commodity means that capital is no longer the success factor in business. What I told you earlier about the 70% of market value of our major corporations that nowadays are intangible assets, what that fact is telling you is that the critical factor in business nowadays, the factor for, to create success is human talent. It is people. And that means, that means that the challenge that to run companies nowadays, to run corporations, the challenge to run a successful corporation is that you as management, you have to be good at the maximization of the talent that you have. And this is true whether you are in the rising new business. This is quite obvious if you're in the banking business. This is quite obvious if you're running Microsoft. But it is equally true if you're running Shell. 
Success nowadays for Shell to be better than Exxon is to have more access to more human talent, to develop that human talent better than your competitors do, and to retain that talent rather than letting it run away as is unfortunately the case in many businesses. The shareholder nowadays is an institution. It is no longer a person with the same objectives as you have as management. No, it's an institution with its own objectives, which are almost certainly different from the objectives of the corporation in which they hold the shares. Their objectives are short-term. And these short-term objectives are put by the financial com community in terms of targets for growth and profits. Somebody sits in Wall Street and in the city of London and tells your company that they expect you to grow 3.8% this year and make 17% profit. And if you don't, if you miss the target, the sell notice goes up. Your share price comes down. And unless you are very big, and very big nowadays means that you have a market value of at least in excess of $100 billion, anything below that means you're just a nice, juicy little target. I would conclude that change in legislation is needed. The company law has to change, and and we have to do it pretty quickly because already there a lot of damage is being done to the economic uh, production capacity of our countries. And I think that is the real drama.